Hello, you are watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines: Farmers and workers observe shutdown across India to mark one year of farm laws. Palestinian lawmaker Khalida Jarrar released after nearly two years in prison. Venezuelan undocumented migrants face violent attacks in Chile. Berliners vote to expropriate private housing units in German elections. In our first story, a shutdown was observed across India on September 27th to mark 10 months of the farmers' struggle. The protest was organized by the Joint Farmers Front and was supported by trade unions, opposition parties, and activist groups. Monday marked one year since the Bharatiya Janata Party government's three farm laws were given presidential assent. The laws have been widely denounced as enhancing corporate control over agriculture. As per reports, protests were held across 350 locations in the state of Punjab alone. Farmers also blocked national and state highways and railway tracks. Highways were blocked in 25 places in the state of Haryana's Jind district alone. Farmers reportedly also took over a toll booth in the state and had now made passage free. Shops remained closed in support of the shutdown in the Haryana district of the state of Madhya Pradesh. Shutdowns were also observed in the states of Punjab, Haryana, Kerala, Maharashtra, Jharkhand and Tripura. Central trade unions also held a protest in the capital Delhi. The Communist Party of India Marxist held protests in several states including Bihar, Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and West Bengal. Other demands besides the repeal of the three farm laws include food subsidies and a basic income. Monday's shutdown was the latest in a series of mass protests aimed at intensifying the struggle. The demand of the farmers has remained for a total repeal of the three laws. In our next story, Palestinian lawmaker and activist Khalida Jarrar has been released after nearly two years in an Israeli prison. She was arrested in October 2019 and placed under administrative detention without charge or trial. A military court sentenced her to two years in prison with time served in March 2021. Jarrar was charged with inciting violence and being a member of a banned organization. She is a leader of the left-wing Popular Front of the Liberation of Palestine. She was also a member of the now defunct Palestinian Legislative Council. She has been arrested multiple times since 1989 and has been placed under administrative detention for prolonged periods. Jarrar was released on September 26 near the city of Jenin in the occupied West Bank. The area witnessed violent military raids by Israeli forces on the night of September 25th. The raids were met with armed resistance by Palestinian residents. As per reports, five Palestinians were killed by occupation forces. 22-year-old Osama Sabo and 16-year-old Yusuf Sabo were killed in the village of Burkin. Raids in the village of Bidu in northwest Jerusalem led to the killing of three people. They were identified as Ahmed Zahran, Mohammad Hamidan, and Zakaria Badwan. As of Sunday, Israeli forces have seized the bodies of four of the deceased. The routine practice has been widely condemned as a form of illegal collective punishment. In our next story, the Venezuelan government has initiated a back to the homeland plan to bring back migrants from Chile. The announcement follows a violent protest against undocumented migrants in the country. Over 3000 people marched to a Chilean city raising slogans against the migrants. Protesters proceeded to attack migrants stranded in the streets and set fire to their belongings. The xenophobic march took place a day after Chilean police forcibly evicted people from the city square. Thousands of mostly poor and undocumented people have been living in the area for a year. At least one person was injured and five people were arrested. AFP reported that it was not known where the evicted migrants were being taken. The attacks were also condemned by the Venezuelan government and UN experts. Thousands of people cross the border between Bolivia and Chile every year. As per reports, around 11 people have died during the dangerous journey in the last year alone. Immigrantes de Chile and Colectivos Sin Fronteras also found that migrants and refugees were effectively excluded from Chilean health policy. Around 3,500 people continue to be stranded. And finally, people in the German capital of Berlin have voted to socialize over 200,000 housing units. The landmark vote was a result of the expropriate Deutsche Wohnen and Co campaign. An activist told CBC Radio that more than 80% of people in Berlin are renters. Moreover, rents have doubled in the past 10 to 15 years. The campaign's target, Deutsche Wohnen, owns around 113,000 housing units in the capital. The referendum asked if over 3,000 units should be expropriated from landlords and shifted to public ownership. As of 3 a.m. local time on Monday, with 96% of the votes counted, 56.4% had approved the measure. Since the referendum itself is non-binding, the German Senate will now be required to pass laws for the expropriation. The vote was held on September 26th, the same day as millions of Germans participated in the general elections. As per initial results, the Social Democrats or SPD have won with 25.9% of the vote. Outgoing Chancellor Angela Merkel's conservative CDU-CSU bloc has won 24.1%. Meanwhile, The Greens have secured 14.8% of the vote share. The left party has secured around 4.9% of the votes. Talks to form a coalition for the new government will now take place. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.